Because even if there is a separation between lies and secrets, most lies are told in order to keep secrets. The history of lying. Hello class. This week we'll be talking about secrets, lies and deception. Now we've discussed lies of omission, where the liar omits details that will put them in a bad position. Look, a little rhyme for you, enjoy. Yes, if you are willfully keeping necessary information from someone, especially information harming someone, it is not an ethical act. But, some philosophers have driven a categorical wedge between lying and concealing the truth. They propose that deception is different from a lie. To be deceptive is to conceal the truth. To lie is to mislead another regarding the nature of the truth. Secret keeping and lying, though interrelated, are not the same, right? It's hard to tell a lie without knowing the truth first. Because even if there is a separation between lies and secrets, most lies are told in order to keep secrets. So as Moynihan likes to say, knowing someone's secret, that's a sacred bond. All right, this time around, we'll be delving into subgenres of lies, mostly focusing on people who take pieces of the truth and hide others. Now, sometimes you just have people who fail to answer or use denial to uh, dodge a question. Denial is when one avoids giving a direct answer and a direct lie. A lot of people know better than to outright deny what happens, so instead they need the truth. They'll drop implicit denials into the conversation. Sir, did you call me a pompous idiot behind my back? I'm an honest individual. Why would I ever say something like that behind your back? Now, I never said no outright. You notice that? But. I buried my denial in a rhetorical question and an influencing statement about myself. Everything in that sentence seems true, but what isn't true isn't directly stated. If you weren't listening for a lie, you might just hear someone express their hurt feelings. Another common form of deception is exaggeration, known colloquially as stretching the truth. When you use exaggeration, you take some elements of the truth and grab them and distort them. Have you completed your final essay? I know I should have, but I was incredibly sick. I had a migraine, I was nauseous, I couldn't sleep, I slept too much, etc., etc., etc. You probably were sick with anxiety, but you weren't dying. You definitely could and should have completed the assignment. Then there's fabrication, also known as BS. Fabrications are adjacent to the truth. They may have bits of truth woven into them, but for the most part, they're just used to get reactions from their listeners rather than to deceive them. Fabricators simply show a blatant disregard for telling the truth. Story time. In the medieval era and throughout the Renaissance, priests, particularly Jesuits, developed mental reservation Mental reservation was a lie of omission that absolves priests of sin. It was a theological argument, so that one could tell as much of the truth as one could without violating the sacred seal of confession. Mental reservation used equivocation, the act of referring to very different things the same way to mislead someone. So here's a great example. There was an early Christian bishop being pursued by Roman soldiers up the Nile. So the bishop was going this way. The bishop sees a band in the river. So he has his boat turned around. On the way back, they run into the Roman soldiers still in pursuit of the, of the bishop. As they passed each other, the Roman soldiers, their pursuers, asked the bishop's soldiers if they had seen the bishop. Per instructions, the bishop's servants said, yes, he is not far off. Excellent, the Romans continued their search this way, as the bishop went this way. So here's what happened. The bishop had instructed his servants to tell him that yes, they had seen the bishop, he's not far off. So instead of telling him to lie and say no, they had not seen the bishop. They did not lie to the Roman soldiers, they just omitted the fact that the bishop was standing right next to them. 
not untrue. Oh, also there are jocose lies. Um, jocose lies are when people restructure the truth for the sake of humor, irony, sarcasm, and teasing. You know, they all fall under jocose. There are also mental disorders that make it difficult to distinguish between a truth and a lie. This kind of lie that isn't a lie is called a confabulation. Confabulation happens when someone states something untrue without knowing that it isn't true. It's often displayed by people with dementia whose sense of memory, time, and reality has been impaired. Sometimes even our own minds lie to us. Even without serious psychiatric disorders, there are many studies of the malleability of the memory. It's gotten to the point where even the reliability of eyewitnesses has come under a lot of scrutiny. Now, lies and deception go hand in hand, traipsing through history together. Most of the great scandals of history come from great secrets kept and the lies used to keep them. Now, before we get all conspiracy theory, uh, I'm not saying the moon landing was a hoax or that Area 51 houses aliens or that there's evidence of Bigfoot. There are plenty of huge lies that governments have used to hide their dirt. In 1953, Frank Olsen plunged to his death from a hotel window in Manhattan. In 1975, a CIA report on Project MKUltra, aka their uh, mind control project, revealed that Frank Olson's death had not been a suicide. The family dug deeper and deeper and finally discovered that a week before Frank's death, he'd gone on a retreat with CIA agents. One evening, they spiked this drink with LSD. The CIA agreed to pay Frank's family $750,000 to make up for Frank's misadventure. But a second autopsy in the 90s revealed that Frank was probably thrown out the window. Nesting lies, lies of commission, lies of omission. Like we were definitely to blame for Frank's death, but not that much. Hmm. You know, that's why cuffs technology has to be used by people in all positions of power. We would set all these conflicts to rest. All right, class, now that you've gotten a good rundown on the kinds of lies, you and others tell, it's time to scrutinize yourself. Lie journals. Say which Liars Club student you think is covering up a secret that would prove their innocence. Say what you think the secret is and why they're covering it up. Be honest about your lies. I might even get you something nice. Keeping an eye on you.